conference held at Nazareth Expo Center in Johannesburg. The conference is expected to end today with a closing address by President Cyril Ramaphosa. SABC News reporter Natasha Piri and video journalist Tabiso Rapukwana are covering the story for us and they join us now. Natasha, thank you so much for your time. So voting is happening throughout the day. Which positions have been voted for and when can we expect an announcement? Well, a very good afternoon to you, and of course, to our SABC viewers. Well, our voting is actually done uh, right now, and what we know is that uh, these uh, over 3,000 delegates are actually behind uh, closed doors in plenary, of course, discussing um, their discussion and policy documents, of course, which is very important, um, you know, Mkolisi, but it's quite unfortunate that conference actually got off to a late start, which then means that not much time is actually spent, uh, you know, deliberating on these policy documents. And just um, as I was browsing through some of them, um, it was quite interesting to note some of the achievements that the ANC Women's League had noted in the uh, policy discussion documents. And of course, we know um, the very famous one, You know, the former, um, the minister, I beg your pardon, um, Praveen God and um, um, Balula just lashing out at him, saying that if he does not implement the policies, transport policies of the ANC, um, he should be removed. But then later on, we saw a statement, um, seemingly um, the ANC Secretary General backtracking from that statement, saying that him calling for accountability does not mean that um, he's calling for the removal of uh, Praveen God. And of course, that issue has actually gained traction on social um, media. So these are just some of the things that actually have been coming out here of conference. Um, we do expect some movement, uh, perhaps after 1 p.m. Of course, we do know that uh, ANC President Sil Ramaphosa will be uh, closing off the conference. As to when, we are not so sure. What we do know, though, however, is that maybe um, after 1 o'clock, um, we should be then, um, uh, you know, getting or receiving the results um, of um, those nominations, the voting process. Um, the newly elected leadership of the ANC Women's League will be announced um, after that, the president then will um, address this conference. And of course, um, there is also that process of the additional members of the ANC Women's League being, um, you know, um, 
nominated and being elected. Um, I mean, being nominated and then um, those delegates will have to then vote for them and then um, those uh, additional members will be announced. It's not so clear if they will be announced here because remember the program is running late. Delegates do have to go back uh, to their respective provinces and respective places. So really time is not on the side of the ANC Women's League. So it would be quite interesting to see what actually happens and the further developments here. But of course, as SAPC News, we're still camped outside here. We will be reporting and giving you the latest, um, not only on television, but of course our social media accounts. With that said, it's back to you in studio. And Natasha, now that you mentioned the Secretary General of the ANC, when he gave that address yesterday, you know, he did say that we are giving you back your Women's League. How was this statement received by the delegates there? Well, it was received very well. I mean, because in the context of, I mean, uh, the last time an ANC Women's League conference happened was in 2015. Of course, you had uh, challenges around load shedding. Uh, I mean, not load shedding, I beg your pardon, um, COVID-19, which also caused um, delays there. Of course, you know that the league as well also was disbanded. So it's, you, you've had a vacuum for around eight years. Um, so, I mean, the women actually received it very well and it was a clarion call to them to, to say, listen, pick up the baton and then you you know, represent the rights of women because they, they had said that the ANC Women's League, women within the ANC Women's League need to find an expression and a voice uh, for women um, in broader society. So if there isn't a functional ANC Women's League, uh, then how do you expect that the rights of women will be championed in, in, in broader society? So that message was received quite well. And of course, just uh, turning our attention now to the convener, Balega Mbete, who has called for the league to stop with factionalism. What have you seen on the ground and do you get a sense that mm -hmm. the league is united? Well, definitely. Um, she gave uh, quite a critical um, political report um, there. And I mean, it was received quite well as well. Um, you're quite right. She had said that um, the ANC Women's League needs to do away with the demon of uh, factionalism, which seemingly, in her words, had plagued the party since, um, you know, the Polokwane conference. Um, but I mean, with the ANC, um, um, it's, it's, especially with those conferences, it's somewhat a replica of um, the conference that we saw last year of, um, you know, the mother body. It, it, it is something to say, uh, okay, let's get rid of uh, factionalism um, in words. But I mean, implementation is the hard part there. And uh, we've seen the ANC time and time again um, talking and preaching the message of uh, renewal, the message of unity. And it is expected that um, the leadership or the crop of leadership that will be elected here will be the ones that, um, you know, carry the task of uniting not only the women, the ANC Women's League, but also the mother body, the structure um, of the ANC as a whole so that is the expectation we've heard time and time again uh, people talking and preaching about unity and the renewal of the ANC but it'd be quite interesting to see that uh, if this actually does this call will actually gain uh, fruition or will be a thing that is really implemented certainly we are keeping an eye on that thank you very much for that update that's Natasha Piri out there for us let's take you to the story officially close the ANC Women's League conference later this afternoon. The elective conference hopes to put to the task team behind it as the formal structure prepares to take over. The newly elected leadership is also expected to be unveiled. SABC News reporter Natasha Piri is covering the story and joins us now with the very latest. Good afternoon, Natasha. Perhaps to start with the status of the voting, how far is the voting process? Well, good afternoon, Mfundo, um, and to our viewers once again. Well, voting has actually concluded. Um, what we do know now is that um, delegates are actually behind closed doors. And of course, um, the issue um, or the issue at hand that actually discussing are those around um, the ANC Women's League's policy uh, documents. Um, but I think one issue that is of concern is the issue of time. Fundo, you would know that um, 
today is the last day of conference. Like you've correctly cited there earlier on, ANC President Sil Ramaphosa is expected to address delegates and close conference, but also uh, despite um, or besides um, them, uh, you know, just announcing um, the newly elected leadership, there also is that lengthy process of nominating um, those additional members of the ANC Women's League, the ANC Women's League NEC members, which is a lengthy process because nominations have to come. There's some nominations that will also arise uh, from the floor. Then it's the issue of election and announcement. So it's not so clear if um, they will actually announce um, those 40 additional members here. So the issue of time is one of great concern. What we're seeing now is delegates just uh, going down. Um, uh, it, I think they're actually going down um, to go have lunch. And um, maybe after the, the expectation was that um, we should see some movement at one o'clock, but it seems as if um, the program will be uh, delayed a bit further, which also then begs the question that uh, is there enough time um, that is actually given to the policy discussion documents of the ANC Women's League? I mean, I'm just browsing through it. It's like 60, 60, 67 pages long, um, Fundo, and really, really begs the question, do they have enough time uh, to robustly debate, um, you know, uh, those issues and to actually interact and have an engagement, proper engagement around the policies of the ANC Women's League? Because these are the very same policies that will need to be adopted and implemented um, by the ANC Women's League would be the most important as opposed to the electing of the leadership that you need to be discussing policy but then to another development from yesterday the reports of the withdrawal of Matabile Tlamini what more do we know around that and the decision itself was it purely because of the fewer nominations or what exactly is going on there Well, it's not so clear um, at this point in front. Of course, there have been talks that uh, indeed she will actually withdraw. But I mean, there was that announcement, like you've correctly cited, of, um, you know, uh, the three uh, people, three women who are actually vying for that position. Of course, we saw CCC um, Dolasha receiving 1,564 branch nominations, followed by Temega Mkunu, who received 796. And of course, for her, by Tabile Damini, who received 258. And the expectation was that because she's a former ANC Women's League um, you know, president, she would actually come out much more stronger. But this was not the case. Of course, we had heard reports, um, you know, two nights before on Friday evening that, um, you know, there were talks around uh, Temega Mkunu's people and Batabile, um, um, Batabile um, Lamini's people to actually somewhat consolidate and come together, you know, as um, or under one slate so that um, their votes don't actually get divided. Um, but of course, like you've correctly cited, there are these reports that are coming out. It would be interesting interesting to see what actually goes on inside plenary. But a person who actually publicly um, had declined is that of Sisin Tombela. Um, you know that she wanted to come back as the, um, the league's uh, deputy president, yes. but of course she declined um, nomination. An interesting phenomenon that we saw um, was the issue of the late ANC MP Tina Jomet Peterson, um, you know, who uh, a moment of silence was actually given to her. But of course, um, you know, just revealing those um, numbers of uh, the number of branch nominations that she got. But it was over 1,000, which was quite overwhelming, uh, um, Fundo. So these are just some of the quite interesting developments that came out of conference. Uh, there's another one as well where an issue of uh, some delegates from the Northwest province that are actually fighting, physically fighting at the registration venue. Of course, we heard that the ANC Secretary um, General, Figile Mbalula, saying that um, disciplinary measures will be held against um, you know, these very delegates mm -hmm. that were actually fighting. You would know that the Northwest province had um, issues in in terms of registration, I mean, at some point, um, you know, just briefing members of the media, the leadership of um, the ANC uh, Women's League National Trust Team had said that even if we have to proceed without the North, the Northwest delegation, they, they will have to actually do that because there were uh, allegations. We even got called as, um, calls, as SABC News, to say that they are bogus delegates from the Northwest Conference. But seemingly that issue has been resolved. Of course, the outstanding issue now is to know what kind of disciplinary measures will be meted out against those two, um, you know, uh, delegates from the Northwest. The expectation was that we're actually going to speak to Kusela Diko, but I understand that she is quite busy right now. Um, but just also just to find out what the program will actually look like, um, especially towards the end of this day. Will the president actually address these delegates before 7 or will it be after 7 p.m.? Uh, would be interesting to find out. Mm -hmm. And then just in closing, before I let you go, speaking on the SG, what was the reception to that address uh, that
that he made yesterday, particularly when he spoke about the need for members of the Women's League to be independent and not find themselves being involved in these proxy battles for men in the mother body. What has been the reception on the ground? Are they speaking in the same voice to say they need to reclaim their autonomy, they don't want to be drawn into battles by men? Mm. True, it was received quite well, Mufundo, because, I mean, you would see, I mean, just also judging by various provincial conferences that we saw um, in the past, it's, the impression that was given um, was that women are always fighting the battles of men and not actually fighting their own battles, not standing up for one another. So that was a clarion call that was actually given by the, the Secretary General of uh, the ANC, Mr. Figuil Mbalula, saying that it's high time that women actually fight for one another, and actually vote for one another, not fight factional battles of men in um, the mother body. But Mufundo, if you'll just please permit me to just uh, do, uh, speak and engage with Kusela Diko. Uh, Kusela, thank you so much for joining us in SABC News. How's the program running? Is everything smooth? What time are we going to start? What time uh, will we know who the newly elected leadership of the ANC Women's League will be? Well, uh, thank you very much, Natasha, for having us on the show. The, unfortunately, the program is running a bit behind. Uh, you'll remember that we lost a day because of the registration challenges that we have experienced, uh, but also the voting overnight uh, would have taken a bit of time. In fact, the last province to vote, which was Guazulu Natal, only finished voting this morning around 10 o'clock. Now, as far as the results go, um, when the chairperson of the elections committee was presenting, um, you know, the process uh, around voting, she indicated counting will take about three hours or so. So if you were to to be optimistic, I think around two o'clock, three o'clock uh, this afternoon, we should have those those results out. Mm -hmm. But um, the work of conference is continuing. Um, at this point, the drafting commission is meeting. Uh, they've looked at draft resolutions that are going to be put before delegates to, to discuss. And we're really going to try and catch up as much time as possible this afternoon before the president comes to address conference. But the concern is, is enough time actually given to, you know, these draft resolutions and policy resolutions you've got good policies on paper but you know problem is the implementation also problems that do your delegates actually read through these discussion documents well, I think a starting point for this conference, which we said even even before conference uh, uh, commenced, was the fact that the ANC itself has recently come from a national conference, where we spent a lot of time uh, both in the first leg of conference as well as the second, you know, discussing policies and resolutions. Now, as the Women's League, we obviously draw our existence from the ANC and we're part and parcel of developing those policies. So what we're doing here is really fine-tuning them to ensure that they've got a, a gender lens, um, you know, so as, as the ANC implements policies and us as members uh, do that, we give them the necessary uh, gender perspective. Um, we, we, we don't doubt that more needs to be done, uh, which is why even coming to conference, we try and get our branches to engage as much as possible on the issues. Mm -hmm. But also remember, these are members of the ANC of the Women's League who are grounded uh, you know, uh, in the communities that they come from. So they are very much a, 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 a fay, knowledgeable of the issues, and they do bring that perspective, even if even as we discuss. But uh, I don't think that we're discounting the possibility of a second leg of conference, perhaps even a uh, hybrid, to ensure that we've really crossed all the T's and dotted all the I's that we need to. Those two delegates um, from the Northwest who are, you know, physically fighting, um, what is the status update in, in terms of, um, you know, the disciplinary um, measures um, that will be meted um, out against them? Well, every conference has got a conference disciplinary committee. Um, at this point, I wouldn't want to go into, uh, you know, discussing those two particular delegates, but to say that even as the SG of the ANC had said, such behavior in the ANC and the Women's League is not tolerated. And uh, as and when instances of that nature arise, our constitution and our disciplinary rules do kick in. And uh, even in this case, we will ensure that those matters are not left unattended. Okay. Ms. Diko, thank you so much for that update. Of course, we will catch up with you uh, later on. Thank you. Thank you so much. Of course, that was uh, Kusela, uh, Kusela Diko. Also, just updating us on um, what's actually happening right now, Mfundo, in terms of conference. Uh, like you've heard her say that, um, unfortunately, there are delays. So, of course, the program of today will be delayed further on. We do expect some movement, like she said, around 2 or 3 o'clock. And, of course, we will keep you updated um, as SABC News. So, we do implore our viewers to stay tuned to SABC News and make us your news channel of choice. With that said, it's back to you in studio, Mfundo much natasha that's our reporter natasha piri just giving us an update on the anc women's league conference
Uganda. We don't have time, comrades. Our conference is delayed. Can we settle, comrades? Sitting a pair of do no. The chair is meant for one to sit on it, not to stand on it. Comrades, here, allow the media to work. This space is meant for media. Let's not congest this area, please, comrades. Amansa, Amansa, long live the ANC Women's League, long live Malibongwe, Ikamala Makosgazi, Basopa, Molweni Delegates, good evening to you all. Mandibuli se ku leadership ye to the African National Congress, the members of the National Executive Committee of the ANC who has been here with us from the beginning of our conference. Mandibuli se ku leadership ye to the ANC Women's League from the national structure to the provincial structure to the regional structure and to our branches, the basic unit of our organization. Malibongwe! Let me also acknowledge all our guests who are here with us. Comrades, I'd like to start by thanking you, the delegates of the African National Congress Women's League, for your patience, for your strength, for not sleeping, for being at the conference for the very first day up to now as the conference continues. I think I would like you to, you know, have a round of applause for yourselves, comrades. Thank you very much for your patience. We have seen your patience, your commitment to the African National Congress Women's League and to your dedication. Thank you very much, comrades. Allow me also before... I present the report to you on behalf of the election subcommittee. Also to thank the team that has done the work in terms of the elections process for our office bearers of the ANC Women's League. 
I thank the members, I, the members of the committee, I thank the CEO of the elections agency and her team, the staff. I also thank the observers who also did not sleep at all. So I thought I should really thank them. Comrades, allow me therefore to do what you've been expecting to, to hear from, to do what you've been expecting us to do as the election subcommittee. May I therefore announce that the total eligible voters, the number of the eligible voters were 3,065. 3,065. Those were the total eligible voters. The total number of votes that were cast is 2,964. Which means that the, the cancelled ballot were only two comrades. Only two ballots that were cancelled. So the total valid votes, comrades, were 2,962. So you can see that we just subtracted the two from the total eligible voters and we, we got the total valid votes of 2,962. So the voter turnout, comrades, was 97%. Allow me, therefore, comrades, to announce the results of your elections, of your leadership of the ANC Women's League. And I'm going to announce in terms of the names of the leadership as they appeared in the ballot box. Allow me to go through all the names per position and then once I'm done with one position, comrades, we can then celebrate. If you can just please give me that space. Our ballot box started with our leader, comrade Batabile Zamini, who got 170 votes. We then have Comrade Tembe Kamkunu with 1,038 votes. That's 1,038. We then have had Comrade Sisisi Tolasha, our leadership, who got 1,000. 729 votes. <laughs> Comrades, allow me, allow me therefore <laughs> Comrades
Amanza! Amanza! Malibongwe! Comrades, you did not give me an opportunity. Comrades, allow me to declare Comrade Sisi Tulashe as the president of the ANC Women's League. Thank you, comrades. Can we now sit down and continue with our report? It is important, comrades, also to report to you that we had only 17 spoiled ballot papers and comrades who were absent were only eight. May I therefore continue, comrades, and report to you the results on the election of the Deputy President of the ANC Women's League. Again, according to the ballot paper, Comrade Lungi Kabashe received 1,661 votes. May I continue, comrades, and report that we then had comrade Lucas Silvia, who received about 62, 62 votes. We then had comrade Swartz, comrade Benis Swartz, who received 1,190 votes. Comrades, allow me, therefore, Allow me to declare Comrade Lungi Kabashe the Deputy President of the ANC Women's League.
Amanza. Away to. Long live the ANC Women's League. Long live. Malibongwe. Comrades, allow me to continue to present your report on the Secretary General of the ANC Women's League. Again, according to the ballot paper, the first candidate was Comrade Lydia Murwane Zita, and the comrade received 1,000 and 81 votes. Comrades, we then had a second candidate, Comrade Nokutula Ngaba, who received 1,611 votes. Comrades, can I finish? Can I finish, comrades? Can I finish? Comrades! Okay. Comrades! I requested to report on all the candidates for the Secretary General position. The third candidate was Comrade Weziwe Tikana Kotiwe, and she received 229 votes. There were only 21 spoiled ballots, and there were only 20 absentees. Comrades, can I declare the Secretary General of the ANC Women's League as Comrade Nogutula Ngaba? Continue, comrades, as we celebrate and report to you on the Deputy Secretary General of the ANC Women's League. The first candidate on the ballot paper was Comrade Magoma Makurupeje, and she received 1,035 votes. The second candidate, comrades, on the ballot paper was comrade Winning Gwenya, who received 181 votes. And the third candidate on the ballot paper for the Deputy Secretary General was comrade Dina Pule, who received... <laughs> she received... Comrades, 1,713 votes. May I...
Malibong kwe! Amansa! Amansa! Long live the ANC Women's League! Long live! Comrades, can we complete our report? Can we please complete our report, comrades? And because of what I have seen, I'm going to start somewhere else, comrades, so that we hear all the results. So I'm going to start with the, ballot, the, the spoiled ballot papers, which were only 26. The absent, abstentions were only 47. And allow me, therefore, to report on your candidates, on your Treasurer General of the ANC Women's League. We had Comrade Maketi Tlape, who received 281 votes. We then had Comrade, Comrade Makwini Litoha Matae, who received 2,000 608 votes. Dina. Thank you. Amanda! Comrades, can you clear the stage? Ah, this is our unique Iman. Iman is here. Yes, let me do it. Come down. Thank you very much. Um, Mama Nandi, with the elections agency, thank you so much. Elections, thank you very much. Comrades, K. 
Can I invite Sister Andy to bring the newly elected leadership, the top five, to the stage to take a picture? The phone is a nigger. Comrades, thank you, thank you very much, Comrade Delegates. Allow me now to invite the let me explain the process now, comrades. We are not going to take nomination of additional members immediately. Just a few minutes, comrades. There will be an item just before nominations. In the next few minutes, we are going to take nominations for additional members. Now allow me to invite the new deputy president of the ANC Women's League, Comrade Lungi Kabashe, to come and preside over this conference. Comrade Lungi. Lungi. 
Masfaki ngoma matabane. Ngoma umonga melu za ungiena ngoku. Masfaki ngoma. We can sing a revolutionary song. Song of songs. including the media houses. Uh, thank you very much. Let me also appreciate the work that has been done by steering committee of the ANC Women's League Conference and also appreciate the work that has been done by the Electoral Commission up to this far. Comrades, the president is about to enter the conference, 
the 13th Conference of the ANC Women's League. Let them sing a very revolutionary song to welcome our president until he enters the conference. Please sing, stand up and sing the president has entered. Amanda! Amanda! 
our seats, comrade. Thank you very much. Now we are about to be addressed by the ANC president, Cyril Matamela Ramaphosa. I want to hear the greetings of the ANC Women's League delegations from provinces. Western Cape, what do you say to the president? Pumalanga, okay. what do you say to the president? the president did I leave anyone out any province which one northern cape northwest what do you say northern cape I did call you western cape I did call you isn't it yes how thank yes thank you very much comrades all provincial delegates have greeted the president. We, as the new elected officials of the ANC Women's League, we want to pay tribute and our greatest appreciation for, for the national task team of the ANC Women's League, led by Comrade Bale Gambete as a national convener for the work well done they have brought us here thank you very much with those words I would like to welcome comrade Bale Gambete the convener I'm not going to say the former convener she is our veteran she will remain the convener of the ANC Women's League to come and introduce our president, the president of the African National Congress. Welcome, Mama. Malibongwe Makoskas Nazingo Kelzen Sani Tembisa on the 11th of July last year. Sati, we are going to get this instrument on its feet because this is an instrument of the African National Congress. This is an instrument of the people of South Africa. Now, 
come here not to introduce the president because I don't know how to I start introducing the president. Ngumonga meluwe nulo niamazi. Ngumonga meluwe tusonke. We had a few minutes no mamu fanta to brief him that inkomfa ishele. But we also did not hide that there were difficulties. So he is well briefed without detail. And right now, I'm just going to publicly thank him, the president, and his top leadership for having given us this challenge. For having given us this test, Mongamil, you tested us indeed. But we believe we've delivered. Oh, Mama, Basa South Africa. And therefore, President Cyril Matamela Ramaphosa, without further ado, please come and address. Oh, Mama, who are the soldiers waiting to get the order? Amanda Amanda Viva ANC Viva Viva Cosatu Viva Viva SACP Viva Viva Sanko Mailogi Vuga Viva Pambili nge ANC Women's League Pambili Raw Young Lions Raw Forward with the Veterans League Forward Amanda Yeah, I did say Isanko Mailogi Vuga Comrade President, newly elected President of the ANC Women's League, O Comrade Sisi Sitolashe, Comrade Deputy President, Comrade Lungi Kabashe. Comrade Secretary General, Comrade Nogutula Ngaba. Comrade Deputy SG, Comrade Dina Mpule. Treasurer General Comrade McQueen Letsoha Matai. <laughs> Members of the National Executive Committee of the African National Congress and the officials who are here, the leadership of the Alliance, comrades and friends. It is indeed a great honor and a privilege to have this opportunity to address the closing session of the 13th National Conference of the ANC Women's League. 
Let me start off by congratulating all of you comrades for holding a very successful ANC Women's League Conference. You are on the cusp of concluding your conference. Yes, indeed, there have been challenges, but you have overcome those challenges, and I congratulate you for that. And I'd like also to say those comrades who contested for elections to be members of the top five, I'd like to thank you in advance for accepting the results of the elections. This is what we do in the African National Congress. We contest for elections democratically. And when we don't succeed, we rally behind those comrades who have been elected. And they become our leaders. So I'd like to call upon those comrades who contested to rally behind the leaders who have been elected. You are in a little while going to start nominations for the National Executive Committee. And once you have concluded the nominations, I do hope and trust that you'll be able to exercise your votes once again and emerge with a fully-fledged National Executive Committee of the ANC Women's League, which will take the ANC Women's League forward. The ANC Women's League is the largest women's organization in the whole of South Africa. That is one thing you should be proud of. Your organization spans the entire country from wall to wall, from the north to the south, from the east to the west. There is no organization of women that can rival the African National Congress. As you conclude your conference, you do so on the eve of the Women's Month, which commemorates one of the most memorable contributions of the women of our country to the struggle for liberation, the Women's March of 1956. This conference was privileged to have been joined by one of the leaders of the Women's March Together with leaders like Umamu Lilian Goi, Rahima Musa, Helen Joseph, Mam Sophie De Brain, and thousands of women confronted a powerful and oppressive adversary by marching onto the union buildings to deliver the demands of the women of South Africa. That march is so well memorialized at the union buildings and each time we have heads of states visiting our country as we receive them, we take them through the memorial symbol of that march, which is represented in two rocks, one being a grinding rock and one being the base. And I always pause to tell them the story of the Women's March in 1956. And I always tell them 
how the then so-called Prime Minister Stradom ran away when 20,000 women of our country marched onto the Union buildings. And they always listen with great attention. And I'm looking forward to once again do it when we have another head of state, President Xi Jinping of China, who will be visiting us in August. And I will tell him the story of that memorial symbol. And it is in many ways your story, the story of the women of our country. You are gathered here today as descendants of those courageous women who marched onto the Union buildings in 1956. You are also gathered here because of the many women who, as they were led by Charlotte McClurke, refused to carry passes in defiance and resistance of the apartheid rulers of our country. As you gather here, comrades, you are, as the women of our country, standing on the shoulders of the women who were jailed in the defiance campaign, who stood for trial for tre in the treason trial, who were part of the drafting of the Freedom Charter, and who spent years in prison, who spent years banished under house arrest, and many who spent years in exile. As you gather here, remember the brave and courageous women who joined the ranks of Umkonto Wesizwe, who led workers out on strikes and who were involved also in the drafting of our constitution. You are gathered here because of the generations of South African women who refused to remain silent in the face of injustice and who took upon themselves the responsibility to determine their own future as the women of South Africa, but also determining the future of our country. It is because of their struggles that our country is today a democracy with a constitution that guarantees the equal rights for all. Through their tireless efforts, our institutions have been transformed to serve the interests of all South Africans. Women have made significant progress towards the achievement of political, social, and economic freedom. And yet, despite the progress that we have recorded, and there has been tremendous progress, we still have much further to go. And this is where your task as the ANC Women's League starts. And I want to touch on the 10 tasks that I believe that you, as members and as leaders of the ANC Women's League, need to take upon your shoulders to improve the lives of millions of the women of South Africa. The theme of your conference is advancing decisive action towards the full liberation and emancipation of women. Just as a non-racial society is not possible without radical social and economic transformation, a non-sexist South Africa is not possible without the economic emancipation of women. You are therefore called upon, both as members of the ANC Women's League 
And of course, as the broader democratic movement, all of us are called upon to achieve nothing less than equality for women in every sphere of life. At this moment in our history, our efforts must be focused on the economic and social empowerment of women. And this is the theme that I want to concentrate on tonight because it is an important task that you as the ANC Women's League must take up and make sure that indeed the emancipation of women both at a social and economic level does happen, yes, in our lifetime. The social and economic advancement of women must become a deliberate feature of our work in government, in the economy, in business, in every area of South African life, be it sports, be it in our various formations and organizations, and every area that affects the lives of our people and society. It is for this reason that I'd like to highlight 10 key elements of how we can foster the empowerment of women, tasks that you must take on. The first in my book is on education and skills development. We need to provide women with access to quality education and training opportunities so that they are able to participate meaningfully in the economic life of our country. And this includes gender equality, yes, in education, in vocational training and skills development programs. Young women must be able to stay in school, to proceed to further education, and to study what they want, not what other people want. We must ensure that girls and young women participate equally in all areas of education, and especially in science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and so on. There is proof that girls and young women are seen to be much harder workers and cleverer than young men in various schools. So this is something that you must foster. Our work to advance and extend access to child care facilities and early childhood development needs to be accelerated to ensure that more women are able to participate in economic activity. Because women cannot be free until they are free to learn, to earn, and to thrive. This is what you must focus on. The second one, you as the ANC Women's League, you must focus and insist on ensuring that the women of our country have access to economic assets, financial resources. Women often face barriers in accessing financial resources such as credit, loans, and so forth. We must ensure that there is equal access to financial services, and we must promote financial literacy to empower women to start and expand their own businesses, and they must be able to make independent financial decisions. There is one country on our continent where it is reported that women own and run 
up to 45% of the business enterprises in that country. This is what I would like to see here in South Africa as well, so that women are the ones who run more and more companies. Because in the end, women are natural entrepreneurs. They run households. And households, you can look at them as home enterprises. Women are adept. They have deep knowledge, deep experience. We must therefore make sure that Yes, women do have access to financial and economic assets and resources. This must happen across a number of areas, from access to land, ownership, provision of housing, access to also public employment programs, and many other areas. The access to land is an important aspect of economic empowerment because land ownership and control are closely linked to a woman's ability to exercise their rights, to make decisions, and to also have a say in matters that affect their lives and the lives of their family members. So land ownership, land being an economic asset, it's very important, and we'd like to see more and more of the women of our country owning land, owning economic assets. Women also play a crucial role in agriculture. We'd like to see, as we link land with agriculture, We'd like to see more and more women playing a role in that because we'd like to see them play the crucial role in food production and security. Access to land therefore enables them to cultivate the land, to rear livestock and secure, ensure that there's security for food for their families. And as government, we will continue to enhance and create opportunities for women in agriculture. One of the countries that will be participating in the BRICS summit in a few weeks has said, as one of the guests of the BRICS summit, they have whispered to us, that they want to import agricultural products from South Africa in large quantities. And they said they want to import something like 300,000 tons of beans. And that is where I also see the women of our country participating and producing those products so that we can export them to that country. They want to import or us to export livestock. And that is where I also see great opportunities for the women of our country in areas such as those. So there are a number of opportunities which I would like you as the ANC Women's League encouraging the women of our country to participate in because as we have these opportunities opened for us it is more important that it should be the women of South Africa who will surge forward and we will support them we will make sure yes we support the women of our country fully and completely so that they can play the role that they can play to grow our economy and also to create jobs. Yes, the ownership of land enhances also what we would call the social status of women and recognition within their communities. And the ownership of economic assets 
can also act as a protective factor for women, reducing their vulnerability to various forms of abuse, of violence, even of exploitation, because it can provide to them a sense of security, stability, and independence, and re reducing their reliance on men so that they can be in control of their own lives. And it is also important to empower women so that they can have intergenerational benefits which they can pass on because it can allow them to invest in their children's education, their health care and overall well-being breaking the cycle of poverty and empowering future generations. The third issue, which I do believe that the ANC Women's League must champion, is to ensure that there are equal employment opportunities for the women of South Africa. Promoting gender equality in the labor market is essential for the empowerment of women. This also includes the discriminatory practices and policies, and it will promote, and you must, as the ANC Women's League, insist on equal pay for equal work providing this is important. You will recall I think last year after Banyana Banyana won the Confederation Cup of our continent we suddenly found that they were paid differently from Bafana Bafana and we insisted that Banyana Banyana must also be paid equally as Bafana Bafana. This goes to the heart of the discriminatory practices that still prevail. Recently, Banyana Banyana stood their own ground because they felt that they need to be remunerated fairly and we supported them and we must therefore insist on the issue of equal pay for equal work and we must also be promoting that there should be opportunities for women to access higher paying positions and leadership positions because those positions must not only be reserved for men, be it in companies, be it in our organizations, be it wherever. The women of our country must be able to get into those top positions. We must ensure that women have an equal chance of being employed, of pursuing the occupation of their choice, and also being promoted and receiving decent pay. We need to ensure that women are equally represented in the workplace and that there is full equity. Because men in our country are more likely to be employed than women. Men are more likely to earn better salaries than women, even for doing the same job. And we must also change the sexist attitudes within the workplace and challenge all employers to ensure that women, yes, are valued in the workplace. And we must end all forms of harassment and discrimination in the workplace. Women are often harassed in the workplace by men, men demanding certain things from women. 
demanding love, demanding sex, so that women can move on. And this is a practice that we as South Africans must abhor. We must say it must come to an end. Would you for a woman to move on to higher positions, some men require that you must do certain things. That must end. My Women must be respected and accepted and recognized for their own sake. This means that we need to change attitudes about the role of women and men and girls and boys within the home as well. Women continue to do unpaid work in society and we must recognize that women have a greater role and value than what we ascribe to them. Now, with regard to entrepreneurship and business development, we need to encourage women's entrepreneurship and we want to take a conscious and deliberate effort to support the businesses that are owned by women because that in itself is a very powerful economic tool. Then it must be done through, yes, access to finance, as I said. I announced that 40% of procurement of goods and services in government must be allocated to women-owned and led businesses. Now, some people thought I was smoking something. But I can assure you that no, I was not smoking something. This is an important issue so that we can empower the women of our country. And in government, we are moving forward with this. Yes, we are moving forward in preparing women with workshops and training. It is taking time but it is something that must happen so that the women of our country must know that, yes, they have a set aside of 40% of the procurement of services and goods. So, as the ANC Women's League, we would like you to lead this effort to move government along because government tends to move very slowly on a number of things. Therefore, the ANC Women's League must play the role of advocacy, it must play the role of monitoring, of ensuring that indeed this is happening, so that we realize this. Our laws and policies must promote and enhance gender equality and to protect women's rights and make sure that discriminatory laws and practices are brought to an end. Social norms must also change. Challenging and transforming harmful gender norms such as patriarchy. We have spoken in the past about traditions and practices like you know, that we have in various parts of our country. Those that militate against the equality that women must have must be discontinued. The ANC Women's League must ensure that this is achieved through awareness, campaigns, education, and community engagement. We must also ensure that women have access and enjoy or have access to health care, including sexual and reproductive health services. Because this will enable the women of our country to plan their families, make informed decisions about their health, 
to be able to participate fully in economic activities without being limited by their reproductive roles. Empowerment starts in the early years of a person's life. Every pregnant woman and every newborn must receive adequate health care, nutrition, social support for children, particularly in the first 1,000 days of life. We must also provide adequate infrastructure for women, child care facilities, affordable housing, as well as ensuring that we reduce child or caregiving burdens and enabling women to fully participate in the workforce. I was overjoyed when I was in an imbizo in the Western Cape. When the Western Cape MEC said to me that President, the house, because we were handing over a house, the house that we were handing over to a lady who had waited for years and years for her house, we had built for 160,000 rand and we handed it over to her Mahala without her paying a cent. But then what made me pleased was when the MEC said to me, President, this house which we built for 160,000 is now worth 400,000 rand in the market. So what we have done, we have given this woman full economic empowerment and wealth. And I was pleased that this government, in pursuing its policy of housing our people, is able to hand over such a valuable asset to a woman in South Africa. That really made me happy. And we will continue to do that. We should also encourage and embark on gender responsive processes so that we are able to understand the specific challenges and barriers that are faced by women in the economy. Because this will enable us as policymakers and organizations to design targeted interventions to monitor progress to one's women's empowerment. We have been talking about gender budgeting for some time. We must use this as an approach to take into account the needs and the priorities of women. It should involve analyzing the impact of government budgets on ensuring that there is gender equality, but more importantly, empowerment of women. Because it should be that gender budgeting must promote that equality that we seek to have. And we should therefore embark on it. We've been talking about it for quite a while, and this is an area that we now need to move quickly on. Lastly, amongst my 10 points, we would like to see the ANC Women's League promoting more and more collaboration and partnerships with a number of key role players. The ANC Women's League is not an island. It does not operate on its own. It must be able to reach out to various formations and role players. As the ANC Women's League, you must be connected. You must be linked to a whole number of partners so that they can join you in the whole process of empowering the women of our country. Because the empowerment of women requires collaboration between government, civil society, the private sector, 
as well as international organizations, be they development agencies or what. By working together, stakeholders can leverage their resources, their expertise, their networks to implement comprehensive and sustainable strategies for women's empowerment at an economic level. I put these 10 key elements to you because it is important that you as the ANC Women's Lead, League, you must be seen to be leading the women of our country. You must be seen to be leading the process of empowering the women of our country. And already you are doing that in many, many ways. Today, you can be proud of the fact that having started off in 1991 in insisting that 30% of the leadership of the ANC structures must include women, you moved to 50%. And today you can be proud that you are the ones who led the process of making sure that all our structures in the African National Congress are based on 50-50. Women are no longer held back. And we have now accepted this as a norm. It is a practice. It is a tradition. It is a protocol. And we are never going to turn back. There should never be a structure in the African National Congress which has more men than women. That should never happen again. And you, you are the ones who must keep on insisting. Sometimes, as an organization, we do backslide. For instance, when delegations are put together, Sometimes it is men who are preferred. You must put that to an end and say this shall not happen because we are the African National Congress. Today your national cabinet is 50-50. There aren't many cabinets in the world that have reached that level. And sometimes when one meets other heads of state, they look at us with envy and they often say, how did you get here? And I often say, the ANC Women's League led us to this point. And I am very proud that we are where we are. Because comrades, the task of the emancipation of women is one that we all share men and women together within our movement and we must make sure that it happens in society as well. The ANC Women's League therefore occupies a unique position within the progressive movement of women in our country and you have also to lead the fight against patriarchy, to lead the fight to end all war, laws, practices, and attitudes that inhibit women's full emancipation is what you need to be leading, both in the public as well as in the private. You need to lead the fight for social and economic empowerment. And you must also together with all of us in society, continue to lead the fight against all forms of violence against women. And this is where you as the ANC Women's League, you have also excelled because you are the ones who raised the issue of violence against women more prominently. And I would like to see you, yes, working together with men, making sure that we do end violence and abuse against 
the women of South Africa. Gender-based violence is what you must work hard to bring to an end. It needs to be noticed and it needs to be heeded. As I said, there is no other women's organization that I know of which has a powerful voice like you as the ANC Women's, uh, women's League. You do so because women make up more than half of our population. And you therefore occupy a, prayed, a place of pride. And you need to do so with confidence. You need to do so with determination. You need to make sure that, yes, you are never undermined. You are never taken for granted. You are never pushed to the back. And you never allow men to override you and men to be just in control of you. You are the women of South Africa. So comrades, don't hold yourselves back. But we also expect you to encourage the women of South Africa to search forward, to have a citizen activist type of approach to be more active in public affairs, to make sure that, yes, women are recognized for what they are. Now, you are, as women, you constitute the largest number of South Africans who are registered to vote than men. And at voting time, it is you as the women of South Africa who turn out in larger numbers than men. So therefore, therefore, as we approach the 2024 elections, the ANC Women's League has an important role to play. And let me immediately say, by the way, you have always played within the African National Congress the most important role of all of us. Because when it comes to mobilizing for the ANC, you are right at the top there. And we thank you for that. Having been in many elections, I have always seen the ANC Women's League really leading the charge. And as the ANC Women's League, when you came with another new innovation of having a young woman's desk, you just excelled way beyond what we had thought of. You have been able to draw young women into the ANC Women's League. We used to think that the ANC Women's League was for, you know, Abu Mama Batala. Uh, and now we now know about, yes, even the younger women who were Abafagama Haihi Langaga Bako Nabu ANC Women's League Abafaga all lipstick and the Bako Nabu ANC Women's League. And I won't talk about a whole range of other things. But we know that you have been able to attract young women into the ANC Women's League. And yes, having brought them into the young women's desk, they are also ready to lead. They are ready to lead as well. So it is important 
that you as the ANC Women's League, you must continue to mobilize the women of our country and you will be able to mobilize them not with slogans, not with just shouting. I have been told, and by the way, I will make this confession. Towards your conference, groups of women said, President, we want to come and brief you. And they came. And I made sure that I don't take sides. I made sure that I don't take sides. And I listened. I listened. I listened because I was firm on the principle that we as men must not interfere in the affairs of women. So, yes, all sides came. They were photographed with me. They were also photographed with me. Bonke, but to president, we are stunned. And it was so. So, comrades, that was the approach that I used. Now, as women, you have an important role to play also in the forthcoming elections. I will be relying on you to ensure that you raise the voice, the campaign, the presence of the African National Congress right throughout the country. And I know that as we go around campaigning, we will find you in the front line. And this time round, you are also going to be joined by the ANC Youth League. Because the Youth League is Vugile. It's Vugile Youth League. And uh, the young lions are going to be roaring. They are going to be up front. And they are also going to ensure an ANC victory in the next coming election. Now, Comrade Balega, she was briefing me. She said, Comrade President, you have an army of women, and here they are. And I can see you all you are, that you are the army of the African National Congress. But she also told me, and this was the point I was making, that you will lead, you will lead the ANC Women's League the women of South Africa, not through slogans, not through shouting. You will lead them with content. Comrade Baleka was saying, the days that we have had for this conference have been too few. We needed to settle down and discuss the content. And she said, the content, the papers that have been prepared, what you already have prepared as the ANC Women's League has a lot of substance. And I've been told that you took the ANC's resolutions, conference resolutions, you dissected them. You looked at them very critically. And you then started commenting on those and where there was lacking with regard to the empowerment, the situation of women, you have added much richer content. So that's what you contribute to South Africa. You are women about the content. You are women who have substance. You are not empty vessels. You are not just people who make slogans you know what you're talking about. Even these 10 elements that I put forward, these are matters that you already know. You're already working on them. And all I was adding was that 
I would like to see you add oomph, add energy, so that we can fully empower the women of South Africa for the future of our country really revolves around our ability to empower the young women of our country, the women of our country, across all those 10 issues that I mentioned. So therefore, you must be unapologetic. You must also be unapologetic about setting out the successes that you have influenced. Because when it comes, yes, to the successes that we have made with regard to the rights of women, you have been in the forefront. Even those difficult issues, such as paying attention to gender-based violence, it is your voice that has been prominent. Yes, you have confronted prejudice and sexism within our own ranks as the ANC, but you're also doing it, and you must do it across society. So you have also challenged the notion that only men can lead. Yes, you have led over a number of years in a number of areas and our structures, and we thank you for that. You must continue to play this role, and because it is through this role that we not only transform the ANC, but transform society. And you've also been playing a role to be able to have this conference moving towards the end on a successful basis. You are contributing to the renewal and to the rebuilding of the ANC. You must also now focus on unity. You may well have come to conference from different angles. You may well have come to conference on different preferences of leadership and what have you. But that must end here. From here, you must now be united. Because you must make the ANC Women's League to be strong and to be united. Those who contested against each other must be able to stand in front of our people holding hands and say, here is the leadership that we as women have elected. We are going to rally behind them and we are going to make sure that they succeed. All I ask, comrades, is that you must wish the leadership that you have elected and those that you are going to put in the national executive, you must wish them to succeed because they must lead this organization and make sure that this organization leads the struggle of women in our country. So factionalism, if there ever, if there was any, ends here today at this conference. The divisions end here because if they persist, if they persist, you are weakening the ANC Women's League. You are taking the ANC Women's League back. In the African National Congress, we have been forging. We've been forging to cement ourselves as a unified leadership and a unified membership. And comrades, we are making progress. We are making progress. The mere fact that the ANC Women's League can hold a conference today means that the ANC is on the march to be united. And we thank you for that. Because renewing and uniting and rebuilding the ANC is what should be prominent and it should also be prominent to yourselves as the ANC Women's League. And yes, there must be no position, no deployment even, and there must be no task that is close to the women 
who are members of the African National Congress Women's League. And yes, I want to commend you, but I want you to work even harder so that we can take on the task of bringing an end to gender-based violence and also, and in this regard, I also compliment you. You are the ones who have been leading this charge of discrimination against the LGBTQI plus community. We commend you for that because you are the ones who are leading this charge, including disabled people, even people who are living with albinism. You are the ones as the ANC Women's League who keep on raising this issue. So we commend you for that and we would like you to carry on with that. So in the end, comrades, you are the hopes of the African National Congress. You are the people who are going to ensure that the ANC gets an outstanding victory in the elections that we are going to. You are the army that the ANC has. And I want you to play that role with dignity, with confidence, with respect, and making sure that in the end, the ANC does emerge victorious. Now, in the end, I want to end by thanking, by thanking Comrade Balega Mbete as the convener. We gave her a very difficult task. And she was saying to me, President, when you asked me to be a convener, you as the leadership did not, did not get my consent. You did not consult me. You just imposed this task on me. And she says, it delayed my retirement. It delayed my retirement, but I learned a lot. And I am grateful, she said, for this responsibility that you gave me. So we say thank you. We say thank you to Comrade Balega. We also say thank you to Comrade Marupini Ramokhopa for also an outstanding task for bringing the ANC Women's League to this stage. It was not easy. It was difficult. We also want to thank the SGO. The way the SGO supported this whole process. Secretary General, the deputies, first Deputy Secretary General, yes, even the TG, by the way, played a key role to bring you to where you are because she had to fund this conference and make sure that it happens. We thank them all. But I also want to give a special thanks to members of the NEC who were deployed to this conference. And some of them are sitting behind me here. And I want to thank them for having been here. Some of them are male, but I want to thank them for not interfering in the affairs of women. So even as we brought them here, I have confidence that they did not interfere like me. I mean, I being Melekele, I won't interfere. And we are very pleased that you've been able to have this successful conference. And I wish you well, comrades, as you now go on with the nominations of members of the National Executive Committee. I hope this process does not take you all night. But you must nominate and rise from this conference with the National Executive Committee. You must rise from this conference having elected your leadership, the leadership that will then take this glorious organization of women of our country forward. With those words, I thank you and I say, Amanda, Amanda, Viva ANC, Viva, Galebuja.
to leave shortly, but before he leaves, we'll allow the choir that has been entertaining us from the first day of the opening of our session to this uh, another second day of our open session. Let me allow our Electoral Commission Committee to take a break. They will come back after 40 minutes. Okay, Gabantabam, no choir master. Justin J. Give the president one song. Thank one item. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, President.